Hey guys, this is Cash Game Cornerstones for Friday, April 29th. I am your host, Steve Repsold at Slurve. Um, boy, what a first week for our videos. I mean, uh, not to uh, toot my own horn too much, but uh, I had a pretty good week worth of picks, and hopefully you guys have been benefiting from that and uh, winning some money. Uh, as that's what we're all, all trying to do here, trying to get better at DFS and win some money. Um, since it's Friday, I'll take just a minute. I'm not going to recap the whole week, but yesterday was a really nice day um, for my picks, especially considering how crappy the slate was. Uh, just a couple of guys that, that I highlighted. Uh, Tanner Rourke did a much better job than I expected. Uh, paid off his salary really, really nicely. Um, uh, Steven Vogt hit a home run. Uh, Chris Herman actually got the start. I was surprised and pleased. He hit a home run. Brandon Drury hit a home run, whose price has finally come up, by the way. Uh, Todd Frazier hit a home run. Manny Machado hit a home run. Had a huge game. Um, and I also mentioned Rickard and Trumbo from, uh, from Baltimore, which turned out to be an excellent stack if you played them. Um, you know, if you played, if you played Ruby De La Rosa... I hope you weren't playing cash with him. <laughs> I mean, it worked out, but that's a that's a results based play. Um, I I can't stand him. He's terrible. But every now and then he has these random outings where he throws ten strikeouts. Anyway, that's enough about what's going on. Uh, so this is the Friday show. Uh, be the last until Monday, because um, uh, it's. Contrary to popular belief, this is actually a lot of hard work preparing for this show. Uh, I don't just wake up in the morning and know exactly who to play. It's a lot of research. So, uh, you know, my gracious boss, we have Saturday and Sunday off to probably work on other stuff like strategy videos. But, but we'll be back Monday. I'll be back Monday with more uh, uh, Cash Game Cornerstones. Without further ado, let's talk about today. Um, pitching is something that is... Good pitching is in short supply today. Um, I, I'm going to toss out a few names and then just sort of talk about um, what I think about them. You know, we got we got Kluber, we got Strasburg, we got uh, King Felix, and um, also we got this complete newcomer, uh, Manea, Sean Manea, who just got called up from the minors. It's an exciting prospect. Um, it's also Steven Matz and... Um, Hesitant to even say his name in this show, but Juan Nicasio. Uh, and so I'll actually start there, because he is he is dirt cheap. I mean, he's almost the equivalent of a punt play, really. Um, but I really don't recommend punting pitcher in cash games, for sure. Um, but Nicasio, you know, he, he, had, he had that really bright moment for a bit there, where it looked like he was going to be really good. And he's had a couple of rough outings since then. Um, you know, certainly could be okay, but you're you're putting your you're opening yourself up to some risk there. Uh, basically, I, I would say only do that if you really want the cash for bats, and I don't think you need to today. Um, it's, but the other pitchers are pretty expensive. There's not really a lot of mid tier guys that I feel confident in recommending. Um, Kluber is. Uh, the most expensive on DK and, and second most on FanDuel. Um, and he is the clear-cut top option far and away. Um, my cash games on FanDuel, I'm going to be locking him in and, and going from there. Um, although, I will say that this is tempting to me. I, I'll, I'll definitely do it in a GPP. I don't know if I will in any cash games, especially on FanDuel, but uh, Sean Manea, with all that upside, he is especially cheap on FanDuel, where he is only uh, 6100 which is giving him away. Uh, DK is a little bit more at 76 but but still pretty cheap, um, but there is a lot of risk you're bringing on there. I mean, this is this guy's first start in the majors. Um, Houston is hard to predict. Um, take a look at their lineup and see how scary that looks to you whenever that, that comes out. Uh, but, but they're kind of, you know, they're tough to predict because they've had some really, really bad outings lately and some really good ones. They definitely can hit, um, but they also can strike out a lot. And this guy's got that kind of high strikeout upside to him. Um, kind of the other two guys, well, three guys, but two really for cash, um, Strasburg, 
which there's a little bit of a weather concern there. Uh, you want to be want to be aware of that, and it's actually a perfect opportunity to come by the Slurf chat room because a lot of our uh, a lot of our guys are based there in St. Louis, so they can give us up to the minute of what the weather looks like um, right there where they are. Uh, but if he's if he's pitching, I I really like him. Um, I think you're going to be able to get him at a little bit of lower ownership because of the other thing other uh pitchers available and the weather concern might drive people off and uh, i'm not gonna lie there's some risk to taking on the cardinals at home like that we're gonna want to check out their lineup and see how scary that looks too um but really outside of kluber there's no one that i feel doesn't carry significant risk um so i'm not sure what you want to do with that i i, I think i think the chalk will probably be going Kluber and Nicasio and kind of playing the punt um, because every other option also has some significant risk inherent in it. Uh, you know, we got King Felix going up against Kansas City, which is not usually a team I like to target, but he has owned them in the past. Um Vegas seems to agree with that assessment as their run total is only three. But Felix also hasn't been good this year. He hasn't looked right. Um, he's lost some velocity on his pitches. Um, KC is, is not a bad team. I mean, they can hit for sure. Uh, so, you know, he's 10.1 he's 10, 10 on DK and 10.6 on FanDuel. I'm definitely not interested in him on FanDuel. On DK, um, I think he, he could make a serviceable sp2 uh, second pitcher um because other than that i mean i don't know i would definitely put kluber in your cash games and then where you go from there is kind of based on how much risk you want to take on i guess i would put it in the order of oh and i haven't even mentioned steven matt's very high upside especially on dk 7900 he's playing the he's going up against the giants though uh they make a lot of contact. They don't strike out a lot. They've been hitting hot. So there's a lot to worry about there. Um, like I said, risk all around. I, I would say probably in the order of Stras uh, Strasburg, Hernandez, man, coin flip. Coin flip there and coin flip between Mats and Manea as to, to who's riskier. Um, but definitely Mats and Manea riskier than Strasburg and Felix. And I've talked an awful lot about pitchers, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Kluber, your clear-cut number one option. If you're playing on DK and you need two pitchers, boy, it gets murky after that. Um, oh, uh, one more guy. Drew Smiley, not on DraftKings, but on FanDuel, where he's only 8,700. He's 10.6 he's on DK. It's a massive, massive difference. Um, I think that at that price... He could be pretty interesting. I mean, he's up against Toronto, um, which is never fun, and they got a lot of big, strong, right-handed bats. Uh, but the price is there. Maybe more of a GPP play. But that's enough about our pitchers. Before I talk about specific bats that I want to target, um, let's look at some of these pitchers to target, as there are a lot of bad pitchers on this slate. Uh, two in particular really stand out to me, and that is Mike Wright uh, versus the White Sox. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to be. The White Sox have been up and down, so I'm not sure how that'll be ownership-wise. They're not priced too badly, and Mike Wright gives up a lot of fly balls, a lot of um, uh, home runs, uh, just generally not a very good pitcher. Um, and then the Angels versus Colby Lewis. Colby Lewis is one of my favorite pitchers to target. He has absolutely ridiculous fly ball numbers, gives up a ton of home runs, uh, and the Angels specifically have wrecked him over his career. Um, so th those are definitely some guys to look at. And, and we'll start by uh, looking at catcher here. Um, oh, there's a really interesting game, just, just in general, that I think is going to go big time under owned, and that is this, this Arizona-Colorado game, specifically the Rockies. Uh, it's not in Coors Field, which, one, means all the prices are down, 
and two probably means a lot of people are going to look at it and go, eh, Rocky's not in Coors Field, moving on. But as you'll see when we go through this, um, there's a lot of lot of value to be had there. Um, they are they're up against uh, Robbie Ray, who while he's performed better recently, is not a particularly good pitcher, and. Uh, Arizona is widely known as a launching pad because the weather there is so conducive to hard hitting um, and home runs and all that. So at catcher, on that note, if he should get the start again today, I still love Chris Herman. I mean, the guy's been tearing it up. Uh, he's going up against the right-handed pitcher, Tyler Chatwood. He's a lefty, so hopefully they'll, they'll send him out there instead of righty Wellington Castillo because he is only 2.8 on DK and 2.2 on FanDuel. Whereas Castillo, who I also kind of like at a thin catcher position, is 3.8 on DK and 3.5 on FanDuel. Um, would much rather have, have Herman. Tyler Chatwood's not good, though, so either of them are okay. But he's also not the guy that I like want to target specifically if I go out there. I mean, he's bad, but he's more of a ground ball pitcher than a fly ball pitcher. Um, so though, another a great punt play. Um, is uh, Brian Holiday at, uh, at 2K versus Hector Santiago on DK. He's 2100 on FanDuel. Um, you know, I, I was in, I was talking in the chat earlier to Max, our, our GPP guy, uh, and you know, he was saying that he had some interest in in Santiago. Um, I don't think I can recommend that. Uh, Hector Santiago has been a lot better this year, but he also. In, in his career and in the last 12 months has been a very high fly ball pitcher. Uh, definitely could give up some some runs to this, this talented Texas team. Um, you know, it's going to depend a little bit on, on their lineup too. Um, if you were going for a mid-tier guy in cash pitching-wise, I guess Santiago is not the worst. Just random little note there. Um, moving on. Uh, if you're not scared of, of Felix Hernandez and you, you think he's he's not right, as some sites have suggested, uh, then Salvador Perez is is a great play. Um, he's a guy that's been hitting the ball really hard. He's you know he's had a number of home runs in the last few weeks, and um, I I expect that to continue. I'm not sure about if it'll be today because he is up against a you know a tough pitcher, even if he is. On the downturn, still a tough pitcher in, in Felix Hernandez, and um, I'm pretty sure the game is in Seattle, which is not ideal um, in terms of stadium or weather. Um, and then we also got uh, Grandal. Uh, it, he's he's kind of expensive, especially on uh, on DK at 3.8. Um, taking on a guy you may not have heard of, Cesar Vargas. He is a rookie for the Padres. Um, as my friend who's a Padres fan put it, he's basically a warm body filling in for uh, uh, Tyson Ross until until he gets back. Um, DK actually prices Perez, or, or not Perez, Vargas at 4400 just like cheaper than a number of the top bats um i guess if you're feeling crazy you could you could do worse than that punt too if you really hate uh your your second starting pitcher but uh yeah not a recommendation i'd make in in cash games but uh, i wouldn't make fun of you for it <laughs> that's about it for catcher never one of my favorite positions so let's let's move on to first base Today we got quite a few guys to like at first base. Uh, the first guy I'm going to mention is Albert Pujols. Um, yeah, he's kind of on the downturn of his career. Uh, he has also owned Colby Lewis throughout his career. As I mentioned, Colby Lewis is not a good pitcher. He generates a lot of fly balls. Um, I think Pujols at uh, 4,300 on DK or, or 3,200 on FanDuel is, is definitely one of the top plays uh, today. Um, David Ortiz, 4,200 on DK, 3,700 on FanDuel. I like him better on DK with that pricing. Um, he's got Tanaka, who, while he's a talented guy with a lot of upside, uh, he can also 
give up home runs. I'm, I'm not I'm not super sold on Ortiz, but I, I think he's I think he deserves consideration. See how the day continues to shape up. Um, Young Ho Park is taking on uh, gets Fulmer. Uh, pay attention to where he is in the lineup. If he's more in you know the four or five hole, uh, that's definitely a preferable spot to if he's at the bottom of the order makes him more appealing. There is a cheap way to get uh, exposure to Colby Lewis, and that is going with CJ Cron, who is 3,400 on DK and 2,300 on FanDuel. Um, I hate to give up my first baseman slot for a guy with relatively low upside in, in CJ Cron, but you could do worse. Um, and then we definitely want to take a look at, at the Indians who uh, who get Adam Morgan today. And the first play I'll, I'll mention there is Carlos Santana, who has been hot lately. Hopefully he'll be at the top of the order. Um, that's what, what we want. He's been doing great leading off. He's 3,900 on DK and 3,300 on FanDuel. Um, I think there's, there's good potential for him to have a nice game there. Adam Morgan... Not a really good pitcher, um, and that's that's kind of that rounds out my first base options, the the top ones that I got for today. Second base, I don't really like the position too much today. I'm gonna start off with with another Indian, and that is Kipnis at uh, 3,700 on DK. Um, he's, he's more expensive on FanDuel, he's well, not more in numbers, but more in percent of salary cap at 3500 uh, so I like him a lot less there, but I definitely like him on DK at 3700 um, in fact, as at this moment, he's a lock and load in my lineups at, at 3700 in second base. Um, I also like Neil Walker. He's been hitting the ball really hard. I'm sure you've noticed he has kind of a ridiculous number of home runs to this point in the year. That will probably kind of taper off a little bit, but right now he's still hitting the ball really hard. So, you know, he's worth worth a look. Um, 3,900 on DK, 3,800 on FanDuel. Jake Peavy, not the worst, not the best. Um... Neil Walker, not the worst, not the best. <laughs> uh, Chase Utley, I uh, I like him a lot better on FanDuel, where he's only twenty nine hundred, whereas on DK he's he's four K, so he, he's significantly more expensive on on DK. I, I don't much like him at that price there, but um, I, I do like him a lot more on on FanDuel, um, and that's. Those are the only three guys that, that I have a whole lot of confidence in at second base right now. Third base has quite a few options uh, again today. Um, start kind of with, a, with an expensive one. Not the most expensive that I'm going to talk about, but Adrian Beltra, um, again, versus uh, Hector Santiago. So it kind of depends on how you feel about how he's performing, if his, if his recent kind of uptick in performance is is a trend or is just variance. Um, Beltra has completely owned Santiago throughout his his career. Some some really really nasty numbers against him. Plus he's he's good player. Um, you know, 4600 on DK, 3400 on FanDuel. Like his price on FanDuel better, um, but still a strong play. Uh, DK. I've got uh, Jake Lamb, 3,600 at DK, 3,100 at FanDuel versus uh, Chatwood again. Um, Arizona, you know, good hitting environment. But I I like him a lot better on, on DK than I do on FanDuel. That, that price on FanDuel doesn't thrill me. Um, Sano, who is back to third base eligible on DK and offense uh, and outfield, I mean. Um, but on FanDuel, he's only on outfield, so just, you know, move this advice over to uh, my outfield section for FanDuel, but um, I like him at, at 4200 on DK, uh, 3500 on FanDuel, not a bad price either, but, um, you know, there's always a lot of outfielders to like, so it's, it's a tougher decision there, although lots of third basemen to like. Including um, the spot that I mentioned that I think will go under owned, the Rockies versus Robbie Ray. Um, 
you know, we got Nolan Arenado, who is an excellent right-handed hitter, going up against uh, Robbie Ray, who is not an excellent left-handed pitcher in a stadium and weather environment that is conducive to home runs. I think you see where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> Arenado is a very, very good baseball player, and he is only 4,200 on DK. Uh, that's like a thousand cheaper than than he last was at Coors Field. And granted, Arizona is, uh, I mean, only slightly less of a of a beneficial field than Coors, honestly. And at this point in the year, when it's still pretty cold in Colorado and not so much in Arizona, it might even be superior. I mean, temperature has a really big effect on how far balls fly and all that kind of thing. So definitely. Uh, something worth worth considering. Uh, these Rockies, I, I think people will go, oh, not in Coors Field, moving on. Um, so yeah, Arenado, 4200 Oh, he's 4700 on FanDuel. That's a more reasonable price. Um, I like him less there. Um, and then uh, Donaldson, Josh Donaldson. You know, you might shy away from taking on Drew Smiley. Um, Donaldson in particular has a really good record against Smiley. Um, you know, he's good against lefties. He's a really good player. Um, expensive though, 4,900 on DK, 4,600 on FanDuel. Um, you know, if you've got extra cash, not a bad play, but you could probably, probably save some with a guy like, like Arenado, for example. Um, or if you really want to save a lot, especially on FanDuel, um, one guy, you know, make sure that he's in the starting lineup and all, because this is a bit of a, a developing situation, but um, you may or may not have yet seen D. Gordon has been suspended 80 games for performance-enhancing drug use completely accidentally. I'm sure I get dosed with amphetamines on accident all the time. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but... Anyway, that likely propels Derek Dietrich into the starting lineup. Dietrich is a guy who can hit the ball. He's, he's got some power. Um, he's not a speed guy like Gordon, so he's not likely to get you stolen bases. But, um, you know, he, uh, the, the best part about him is he's 2,200 on FanDuel. On DraftKings, he's 3,500. I'm significantly less excited about that price. Um, and third base is, is a position that, that you don't want to give up too much at. And... Um, that's all I got for third base. Oh, oh, yeah, this guy, I'll talk about him at shortstop. He'll be my next stop. So then, shortstop. Um, Eduardo Nunez. He didn't get the start yesterday. Uh, instead, Danny Santana got the start. What We want to watch this situation today. I mentioned Nunez before because he's also third base eligible on DK, although um, I don't know why you would play him at third base, given the other options there and the relative lack of options at shortstop. Um, and honestly, I'm hoping that Danny Santana gets the start. He, he was the leadoff batter yesterday. He's currently projected to get the start, but you really never know. Um, he is only 2,400 on DK. It's a steal. Um, he's 2,600 on FanDuel, but I believe that he might be outfield eligible only there. I don't know. I should have written that down. But uh, he's a much better play on, on DK for sure. Um, again, with the same theme of, of Rockies on DK, Trevor Story, another big right-handed bat who can hit home runs against Robbie Ray, left-handed pitcher who's not that great. Uh, 4,200, same as Arenado. They're giving these guys away. Um I think that's a really strong stack, or at least mini stack, even in cash. Um, he, he is, oh, actually, he's only 4K on FanDuel, um, so he's pretty pretty strong play there, too. Um, I realize that this is the second day in a row that I've kind of recommended Trevor Story after I said I'm not sure he's ever a good cash play. So, <laughs> so the important thing to remember there is there's, there is uh, significant risk because he strikes out a lot, although um, he's shown some better plate discipline lately. Uh, you know, he had two walks in the same game the other day. That was that was just madness, and they weren't intentional walks. Uh, so maybe he's getting a little better at that. Maybe he's learning a bit as he uh, spends some more time in the majors. Um, 
Regardless, we have other options uh, like Francisco Lindor. I think he is just a really good player, uh, very underrated and very underpriced at 3,800 versus Adam Morgan. Um, I think there's a lot of value to be had there. That's that's DK on FanDuel. He's 3,500, a little bit less appealing, um, but not much. I mean, he's still he's still a strong play there. Um, and then, uh, moving on, I feel kind of middle of the road about this guy, Jonathan, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, I think VR is how you say his name, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, short stop for, for the Brewers. Uh, 3K on DK, 2.7 on FanDuel, much more attractive on FanDuel. Um, you know, he faces off against Conley, nothing, nothing scary there. He's not a big power hitter, but... He stole, I want to say, three bases yesterday. Um, really kind of pissing me off. <laughs> I considered him, but he was against Arietta, so I said, uh, fuck that. And then he didn't even need to, to really do much hitting. He just stole bases and racked up the points. Um, he's worth a consideration. Um, and then there, there is Corey Seager, who I feel like I talk about every day he plays. He's, he's a really good player. He's been doing really well. Um, he's also taken on uh, Cesar Vargas, who is... Um, actually, Cesar Vargas on DK is cheaper than Corey Seager. Corey Seager is 4500 on DK, and Vargas is 4400 So that's... Yeah. Yeah. That tells you something when a pitcher is cheaper than, than batters he's facing. Um, I'm not that interested in him on, on DK with that price, but I am on FanDuel, where, where he's only 3900 um, Much, much better price. Definitely worth a consideration at the... Well, not, not that limited today. Not like second base, but somewhat limited shortstop position. Oh, one sad note. At least for the moment, Manny Machado is no longer shortstop eligible on DK. Only at third base. At, uh, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a tier for the the end of Machado at shortstop, but I don't know, hopefully he'll get a couple of starts there, and whatever DK uses to make that decision will put him back at that shortstop again for us, because that's it's a great, great guy to be able to plug in at shortstop. Speaking of Machado, um, Baltimore in general is, is kind of in a spot that I like. I'd like it more if they hadn't blown up yesterday because I feel like their ownership will be inflated because of it, and I'm really more interested in them as as a low-owned kind of thing, because Carlos Rodon, um, he's a really talented guy. At least that's what everybody tells me. <laughs> um, I, I never liked Rodon. I see him as a, a... I don't know if it's a choke artist, but he, he has a really bad tendency to implode when things start going wrong. For Rodon, they keep going wrong in a big way. Um, so there's some upside in in the Baltimore bats, uh, but again, they might be overowned given their huge games yesterday. And I'm less interested in them in cash uh, because of their because of Rodon's potential. Um, so that being said, uh, let's move on to to outfielders. Um, first guy I'm gonna gonna mention because I mean, this price just slapped me in the face on, on DK when I saw it. Ryan Ryan Rayburn, um, the lefty slayer, <laughs> is 3K versus a lefty um, in Arizona and uh, on on DraftKings. He's 3.1 on FanDuel, which is is less of an exciting price, but still. Not a bad price at all. Um, same game. We got David Peralta at 3.5 against Chatwood. Um, I like that game too. Um, Matt Joyce, is, if he happens to get the start, I, another guy I talk about all the time. He doesn't always get the start. Um, and he's not in Coors Field now like, like he was before. But he is still 2,400 on DK. And um, he goes up against Dan Straley, who is no one, no one scary. Um, uh, and he, he's twenty eight hundred on Fanduel. Way less excited about him there. I, it, Joyce is a guy that I'm excited about until his price comes up. Sorry, you can hear hear my cat getting in on the on the video here, um, and probably my dog running around in the background. Just a zoo a zoo going on today. Apologies. Um, 
I promise they're not affecting my advice, though. <laughs> a guy I really like, if you can somehow fit him into your lineups, somehow, I need to get closer to the camera, um, Mike Trout. He's 5,400 on DK, probably worth every penny. He has destroyed Colby Lewis, um, and he's Mike Trout. So good chance that, that he keeps that up. He's 4,900 on FanDuel. I kind of feel about the same. Uh, I feel like that price is, is about, about equivalent given the different salary caps. Um, I like him. I'm going to try to get him into my cash lineups tonight. I may not succeed because he's expensive and there are a lot of cheaper outfielders to love. Like a guy that I've touted a couple times and has made me look good, Michael Conforto. Um, he is just hitting the ball really hard. He's got a lot of trends going in his favor. Um, I think he's just kind of a pretty good, pretty good player. Uh, Jake Peavy, not scary. Conforto's 3.5 on DK, 3.9 on FanDuel. Far less interested there. Um, and then also I mentioned uh, the White Sox against. Uh, Mike Wright. I, I didn't really talk about too many specific White Sox. They don't. None of them specifically jump off the page at me, but I think there's merit to them. Um, so if you can find ways to, to get them them in, or if you know that that fits in nicely, a couple guys I will mention: uh, Melky Cabrera. Uh, he's 3,800 on DK, only 3,300 on FanDuel, but more attractive price there, but not much. Um, you know, this is more about targeting the pitcher than it is uh, that I have great things to say about Melky. I mean, I love love me some Melky, but all, all the same, um, you know, his numbers don't jump off the page. It's more that he's just facing a really bad pitcher that, that makes me want to recommend him. Um, Adam Eaton is a FanDuel exclusive recommendation. He is a re Ridiculous, 4,900 on DraftKings. I mean, that's that's like the same price as Donaldson. I, I mean, th yeah. Don't pay 4,900 for Adam Eaton on DK. On FanDuel, he can be had for a mere 3,200. Uh, yeah, I want him on FanDuel. He leads off. He's against a, a bad pitcher. There's... Some home run potential upside, definite stolen base potential upside, definite cat meowing in my video upside. She's apparently a fan of Eaton. Um, Cole Calhoun, is, these are actually the last of these are all kind of FanDuel exclusive recommendations. Uh, Cole Calhoun gets Lo uh, Lewis as well. Um, he is only 2,900 on DK. Uh, that's a steal. He's four, I, I'm sorry, 2,900 on FanDuel. That's a steal. He's 4,100 on DK. That is not a steal. Not interested there. Absolute same goes for Matt Dane Decker. If if he should get the start again, he was the leadoff batter yesterday. He's doing that again today. I like him on FanDuel at the bare minimum price, uh, 2K. And on DK, he's a full 3K. I am not at all interested in that price. Um that's all I got for you today. Oh, oh, wait, one more thing that I forgot. This guy is numbers, again, not, not off the page. This is purely a, a BVP play, uh, and that is Miggy Cabrera, who has, has had some fire in his bat lately and specifically has just annihilated Hughes. Um, I think he has five home runs in his career off him. I don't remember the number of the bats off the top of my head, but it, it not... Really, really good record versus him. He's pretty expensive. Um, I'm fairly sure that, that DraftKings takes batter versus pitcher into account in their uh, in their salary algorithm. Uh, at some point, I want to do some more kind of research on that when I have the time. But that's that's the impression that I have right now. Um, and that is now all I have for you. Uh, this has been Cash Game Cornerstones for Friday, April 29th, closing out the first week of content at Slurve. Make sure you come on by the Slurve chat room, uh, slurve.com. It is free to sign up. Um, you can come in and chat with us. And like I said, we've got our team in, in St. Louis that will be keeping an eye on the weather for, for that um the Washington against St. Louis game there, see if Strasburg is, is a safe play or not. 
Um, plus, you know, lineups come out during the day, things change, all that kind of stuff. I will be hanging around. I'll have um, updates. Just come in and, and chat out your lineup some, you know. Been having some fun with, with some users, just talking stuff out. And, hey, you know, I learn things, too. Um, there, there's some cool things that have been pointed out to me. And so just come on by, Slurve.com. Once again, this is Steve Repsold hosting Cash Game Cornerstones at Slurve. Thanks.